Our gospel reading shares another story of Jesus appearing to the disciples after his crucifixion and resurrection. The disciples are still filled with fear and confusion. And once again, we hear Jesus' first words upon his appearance as peace be with you. From the gospel according to John. Jesus actually stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. In their panic and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, why are you disturbed? Why do such ideas cross your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, really. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as I do. After saying this, Jesus showed them the wounds. They were still incredulous for sheer joy and wonder. So Jesus said to them, do you have something here to eat? After being given a piece of cooked fish, the Savior ate in their presence. It might seem like a strange story, Jesus appearing and eating a fish, but we might take these words as a reminder of the importance of the world, the importance of physical things, the importance of our connection to the earth. And so reflecting on this gospel story, we share together our new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Cheers.
Anna was certainly one of the less affluent people in our congregation, but she was generous, giving of her time and of her resources, giving her wisdom to others. And she is the person that invited me a few weeks before Easter when she knew that I would be staying away from family, invited me to join her for Easter dinner. And when I arrived in her small apartment, the table, the table for the Easter meal filled the entire living space so that the guests crowded in, a dozen or so, had to shift around each other, almost climb over one another to get to our seats. And the table was covered in food, and there were stories told and conversation, and we ate and shared that time together. These are words from 1 John. See what love Abba God has lavished on us in letting us be called God's children. Yet that in fact is what we are. The reason the world does not recognize us is that it never recognized God. My dear friends, now we are God's children, but it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. We know that when it comes to light, we will be like God, for we will see God as God really is. A young child in the spring saw a tulip growing on his neighbor's yard. And each day when he passed by, he'd look at this strange tulip, which grew more sideways than up, yet the flower reaching towards the light, reaching up towards the light. And over the weeks, that tulip, as all tulips do, died. And that toddler came and returned to that site again and again to see the dead tulip, and then again and again to see where the tulip was, paying attention to small things, honoring life. My dear friends, now we are God's children, but it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. We know that when it comes to light, we will be like God for we will see God as God really is. We transplanted rhubarb this spring from my parents' garden, where it had always suffered a little bit, not getting enough sun. And at first, after transplanting it, it seemed not to do much. And then the rain came, and suddenly there were leaves growing new life there, it had put down roots, it had come to belong so quickly. It's a sign of something new, of the possibility that rests even when it doesn't seem likely. But it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. What we are to become in the future we can't know, but let's imagine. 
I imagine in the future, what we are to become is not an eradication of death, but a recognition of death as a natural part of life and a way that death can be present where it's honored, where it's gentle, where family and loved ones can be present, where there's time for saying goodbye, for remembering stories, where death might be just. We know that when it comes to light, we will be like God, for we will see God as God really is. I imagine that we might see rich ecosystems, that we might pay attention to our watersheds, that we might celebrate and protect the diversity of life and see it not as a relationship based on serving our own wants and needs, what is a relationship between beings based on care, mutuality, and a, a common striving for the goodness of life and the possibilities of the future. My dear friends, now we are God's children, but it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. Will we find ways that technology can support life for humans and all living things rather than detract from it? Will we allow our science and our technology and our innovation and our creativity be, to be something that is life-giving, not just for a few, but for all human beings and for all living things? I imagine the ways that we can nurture the many levels of connections, the close friendships, the acquaintances, the non-friends who we might not even know the names of, but have those short, important conversations with, the strangers that we see and pass by and care for in indirect ways. I imagine more attention to sharing our stories, to honoring confidences, to close listening, to seeking understanding. See what love Abba God has lavished on us in letting us be called God's children. Yet that in fact is what we are. The reason the world does not recognize us is that it never recognized God. My dear friends, now we are God's children, but it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. We know that when it comes to light, we will be like God, for we will see God as God really is. What do you imagine? How will we be like God? What does the future hold? Should offer to come. 
contest with thy arising Can there be any day but this, though many suns to shine endeavor? We count three hundred, but we miss. There is but one, and that one. As we share in these words from Psalm 4, we might hear them as expressing our own feeling as individuals and as a community, especially during these difficult COVID times. We might also listen to them as words spoken by creation, spoken by the earth and the creatures on it, calling for care and justice. Answer me when I call God of my justice. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy. Hear my prayer. How long will you people dishonor me before God? How long will you love delusion and pursue lies? Know that those who love Yahweh have been set apart by divine will. Yahweh will hear me when I call. Tremble and stop your sinning. Search your heart alone and silent in your room. Offer sacrifices of justice and put your trust in Yahweh. So many are asking, does good even exist anymore? Let the light of your face, Yahweh, shine on us. You put joy in my heart, a joy greater than being full of bread and new wine. In peace, I'll lie down. In peace, I will sleep. For you alone, Yahweh, keep me perfectly safe. We pray for the earth and hold in our hearts the planet that holds us. We pray for all who suffer from a disrupted climate, for those who endure famines and floods, droughts and wildfires, hurricanes and heat waves, those who face hunger, thirst and disease, those displaced by climate and resulting conflicts. We pray for our sisters, brothers, and siblings all over the earth. We pray for our animal kindred and kin, for each species shrunken, threatened, extinct, for the plants and the animals struggling in our time to adjust to a swiftly changing world. We pray for reconciliation, people to people and people to land. We pray for ourselves, that we, in our words, our choices, and our actions, would be true and faithful to earth and to you, creator God. We pray and seek the wisdoms of Sophia to guide us. Sophia, who danced with you at the beginning of creation. Amen. This Easter season, we're taking time each week to try a small spiritual practice. And it might be that you try one and it's meaningful for you and you continue it, or it might be that you try it once or a few times and find it's not meaningful for you and let it go. Neither of those options is right or wrong because each of us is fed, is nourished by different spiritual practices. The small spiritual practice that I'll share today comes from Barbara Brazu, and I invite you to try it and see if it's meaningful for you. Take a moment and write down three to five names of people who you feel offer you support, who are there for you. Cut them up or put them on separate pieces of paper and then put them into a basket or a bowl or some other small container. Over the next set of mornings, 
Each day draw one name and spend a few moments thinking about that person, feeling gratitude for the ways they support you. And then try to reach out to them. Send an email or make a phone call, write a letter or a postcard, uh, speak to them if you're in the same home or encounter them on a walk and just let them know that you appreciate the ways that they support you, that they're in your thoughts. What is the world waiting for? Glimpses of heaven above or glimpses of the kingdom around us? Let our witness to the kingdom be a moment of revelation to its wonders amongst us. May the Lord rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. Sunshine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, until we meet again. Yeah. 
Krishna.